everybody, it's Jules here with Beanie. Howdy. And welcome back to another episode of the Monday Night Wah! Wow. Set on the one and only Brobna. And we have a super special battle report for you today because it is Live and Let's Dice Scissors' first 10th edition battle report. Ooh, baby! And it's a especially special, special episode because you are going to see a brand new chapter make their first appearance on the channel. It's time, my friends, to introduce you to the Sentinels of Brobna. Brobna. As they take on the Orcs. I probably yes. should have said that. So welcome back to another ruined sector of Brobna. And who, baby, there are tons of crystals around, which means that there is trouble abound. We have a goo factory over here. We've got some craters. We've got... More goo spread around different areas, a ruined church over here, and lots of chaos. There has been many a battle taking place in this area. Why is that? Well, it turns out that this is one of the many fortifications of the Sentinels of Brobna, who we will introduce you to in a minute. Now, you may remember at the tail end of Ninth, we had our final battle report between Space Marines and Orcs, and the Orcs managed to best the Space Marines, and their prize was that they get to be the first people to take on this brand new channel chapter. Very excited to see how they do. The Orcs, I've built a fairly strong list. I've carried over what was good in 9th into 10th. Hopefully it will see me through. But the Sentinels of Brobnar, well, they have got quite a lot of spice, let me tell you. So let's go meet the teams. So here we are with my 1,000 points of Orcs. Ooh, baby, they are mean, they are green, and they are here to crump and dump. I am leading the force with a beast boss on Squigasaur because even though he lacks the lone operative keyword here, which means that he can't be targeted, he is tough as nails. He has a four up feel no pain. Woof. <laughs> He's got a three up base save, mate. That's the most mad thing about this. He and hasn't he... even got a shirt on. I know, right? <laughs> but he is here to do tons of damage. We've done a test game with him before and my lord, he was tough to take down. Um, he's supported by his uh, King Orkther over here, who is riding his Smasher Squig, and I've given him the enhancement of Head Whopper's Kill Chop, which means that all of his melee attacks that aren't extra attacks have the uh, Lethal Hits rule, or dev no, it's Devastating Wounds roll, which means that uh, if I roll a six to wound, they become mortal wounds instead, which is pretty, pretty gross. Supporting them, yes. I've got the best unit in Orc 10th edition, some Gretchen over here, who are led by a not exactly fully painted uh, run herd over there, who's a mega knob. Um, he's just going to basically uh, act as a proxy for today's battle. Now, these guys here have an amazing ability, which is on a four up, if they're next to an objective at the start of my command phase, roll that. And on a four up, I get a free command point. Yes, mate. Wow. Love it. Slush. I know, right? I've got six war bikers over here who are deadly at range because when they get within nine inches, I add plus one AP to their guns. Fantastic. I've got six squig hog boys over here. Uh, they've got a bomb squig with them and they are pretty nasty on the charge, especially when led by King Orkther who can join their little group. I've got 10 Beast Snagger boys over here, and of course, I've got the mighty and mightily stupid Kill Rig. Now, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna assume that you guys have some understanding of how 10th edition plays, because we aren't able to go through every single rule as it happens, but if there's something particular of note, we will tell you of the biggest changes between 9th and 10th edition. But that is my 1,000 points of Orcs. Now let's go meet the brand new chapter, The Sentinels of Brobnar. So, Beanie, tell us about the brand new channel army, the Sentinels of Brobnar, painted up lovingly by Crazy Doug and me, but you'll be able to tell which ones I did because they're slightly the wrong shade because I didn't get the colour scheme right. Hooray! <laughs> so, who is leading this force today? So, it is the Primaris Lieutenant, who Ooh. currently is nameless. Yeah, he, he has, has not earned, earned it. has to earn his name. And I've given him the enhancement, the Honor Vehement, which essentially allows him to get an extra attack and a strength of his melee weapons and if I am in the assault doctrine he gets two lovely stuff, so he gets mate. real choppy in that uh, doctrine which Oof. will be very very nice and next to him is a Phobos librarian with nothing else on him he's a bit sneaky that's his game yep that's what enough. he likes yeah uh, then behind uh, them we have on the left we yep. have a five-man squad of infiltrators who have the comms array and the uh, Helix Adept Gauntlet, which gives them a six of feel no pain. Nice. And I can't remember what the comms array does, because I never seem to. Nice. <laughs> On the right, we have the first company of the Sentinels of Brobnar, Ooh. who are kitted out with a variety of weapons, including an assault cannon, a power sword, and many a storm bolter and power fist. And remember, they've got that handy-dandy teleport ho 
diploma as well, which is always useful. Oh yes, they, nice they, they will be hiding in the sky, yeah. I imagine. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. behind the infiltrators, we have five of the newest, no, they are that. Oh, over here. Yes, that's the one. Uh, the Infernus squad, we have a five-man squad uh, with the Pyre Blasters, gonna give them a try out today. Uh, I, I quite like them, I think they're very cool. Strength five flamers on r regular battle line troops is super cool. Yeah, and trust me, against orcs who have very pitiful saves at the best of times, that's going to sting. Yes, and then on the right we have the heavy intercessors with their longer range guns and their uh, fantastic ability that if they're next to an objective, they get plus one to their save against damage one weapons. And which uh, is let bonkers. me just double check here. Uh, yeah, most of my weapons are damage one. Yes, they are. <laughs> uh, so that that is really, really nice. And then behind them, we have the Desolation Squad Whoa. with their super crack launchers and the Castellan launchers and the Vengabus launcher oh. on the Sergeant, because why would you not want to be in the Vengabus? Everyone is getting ready for the Vengabus, mate. It's going to be horrendous. And then from the Augustus uh, box set, we have the Brutalis Dread. Oh, who yeah. Who has melters in his breasts and two giant Clory Death Fists. And, no. and he has the thing on his top of his head, the Icarus Stubber. Like, he is gross. I cannot wait to see if he can just kill a kill rig. I mean, the thing is, is that he has such damage potential. It is insane. And my only hope is, is that he's got to get to me. So um, as long as I keep him at a distance, that's my only plan. Nah. Oh, yeah, so that is um, your 1,000 points of Sentinels of Brobnar. Now, if you want to know a bit more about the Sentinels of Brobnar, you can go back on the ch last week on the channel. We released a video saying who they are and explaining a bit of their lore about Robnar. So if you're fresh to the channel and want to check it out and support them and maybe even be able to download a custom little pauldron so that you can uh, start representing them in your own armies, then go check that video out. Um, also, got to give a massive shout out to Mark, by the way, who's printed us off these lovely Battleshock tokens here. So we've got a test required side here and a Battleshocked one over there. We did pay for the 3D cults thing, by the way, before anyone says that this is a design that's already out there. He's just adapted it from uh, that to add our logo. What They're a lovely fantastic. Guys. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, indeed they are. And he's the, uh, also the person that's designed the pauldrons and the little icons as well. So go check him out and give him some love. Description in the link below. So there we go. That is our two armies. We know what we're playing as. We know what we're playing on. Now let's quickly explain what we're actually doing. We're playing open is it Endless War? Yes, yeah, so it's the, yeah. it's the free mission inside Leviathan. So basically this is uh, one, two, three, four objectives that we've already pre-placed over here. We've given uh, the Sentinels of Brobnar two near their deployment over there because they are the ones that were already anticipating the Orc attack. The Orcs have arrived. They don't want to hold anything in their back line over there. They want to push forward into the centre mass to claim these two objectives over here. It's all about moving forward with the boys. So now we know what we're doing. Let's crack some heads. So here we are after deployment and the Orcs won the roll off so they are going to be the attacker today which means they're going to get turn one and they have shown up in force. War bikers. Gretchen, <laughs> maybe less so. Um, Gretchen. The, the Squig Hog boys led by King Orkther over here and we've got the Squig boss who is basically just roaring at the top of his voice to get forward, claim the objectives and kill the Umis. We've got a kill rig over here that's going to dash down the flank and hopefully claim objective number four and obliterate anything that pokes its purple head out. Now, over this side, I know, right? <laughs> it was intentional. Um, over this side, we've got um, the Desolators are at the very top here, supporting the Brutalis and the Heavy Intercessors that are going to move forward onto Objective 1 and secure the line. The Phobos has uh, whispered his psychic sneakiness over to his infiltrators, and they have advanced a little bit forward out of the deployment zone. Not so much that they've attracted too much attention from the Orcs, but they are ready to smite and... Well, basically just be a bit of a roadblock for them. Yes. And over here, the Inferno squad with their very well-chosen LTE captain who gives lethal hits on these boys <laughs> on Flamers. Yes, we know, we know. We, this is the only models that we had painted up at the moment. But what we are going to say is, is that because he, he gives lethal hits to, um, which means that if uh, you've got a six, they auto wound. We're going to say that what he's done is he's told them to coat their fists in oil and they are now spicy fists in combat. <laughs> That's yes. what he's doing for them. So um, they're on this flank over here, and the Terminators are in the sky. The uh, Beast Stanger boys are inside the kill rig, by the way, just in case people are wondering where they are. So that is the deployment. The Orcs are going to get first turn. It is our first turn of 10th edition. Let's make it a good one. 
So here we are at basically the end of Orc Turn 1 because nothing is within range for me to shoot and I advanced everything that I possibly could. The Warbikers stormed ahead with a 6 to their advance rolls, putting them just in range of the third objective and even the Grots managed to get a mighty 5 to scurry from behind cover and head towards even more because, let's face it, they don't want to be out in the open for too long. All of the war boss and his uh, Squig Hog boys here are moving towards the center mass of the third objective and they are just trying to claim the middle ground before then going to chop and charge. And the kill rig, he got even, uh, even he got a four, so that meant that he was storming out of um, his uh, territory over here and ended right here. Admittedly, I am staring down the barrel of quite a lot of desolators over here, but still, it is better to be closer rather than be dead and far away. Father Ted. So here we are at turn one, end of movement phase for the Sentinels of Brobnar, and there has been some significant shifting in key locations. The Brutalis over here, supported by the heavy intercessors, have claimed this objective and set up a stronghold, sending forth their friends, the Librarian and the Infiltrators, forward to act as a bit of a buffer slash meat shield. <laughs> yeah, Operation Human there. Shield is a go. <laughs> now, here's the thing. Um, because of the fact that we do not have tokens for Oath of Moment, which allows you to reroll all hits and wounds against one select enemy unit. We are using the grudgment tokens from the Vatan that now have no use in 10th... Specifically the number three, because there is no longer a third phase. <laughs> Thank you very much, GW, for that. I bet all the Vatan players love that. We're not salty, we're not salty. So, um... Me? Yeah, no. you are. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, and the Inferno squad, uh, with their spicy fists, has decided to move up around the corner over here, supported by the LT. They are claiming the other objectives here on six inch both. advance. I know, man. They are very comfortably in there. Snug, some would say. So, now it is time for the first shooting phase of the game worth any real merit. Now, you've got the infiltrators over here that can shoot. You've got the heavy intercessors that can definitely shoot. I'm pretty sure the desolators can see that kill rig poking up over there. They can. There's a fair few targets to go for. So, where do you want to kick things off with? So we're going to start with the psychic phase because oh, it just yes. feels like yeah, it yeah, nice feels that you need to do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so sure. he has his witchfire ability. Now, what do you think? Should I go for the hazardous one and see if I can actually blow his brains out in his first go? Now, hazardous means if you roll a one, you do the damage to yourself. Is so, that right? so unlike in uh, ninth edition, uh, you do all of the attacks first, mm -hmm. and then I think for the attacks you then roll a one. In fact, why am I thinking You've when GW really. have recently provided <laughs> us with a lovely app? <laughs> Free for a limited time only. E chess. Yes. Uh, by rolling. Yeah, so I would only have to roll 1d6 for yep. this, and on a 1, he does himself three mortal wounds. Oh, blimey. Okay. But he does have a 4 up, feel no pain to psychic. Oh, no, no, that wouldn't be a psychic attack. Um, it is a psychic attack, is it not? It's a hazardous psychic attack. He is it, or is it a, does it specifically have to have the psychic keyword in? Let's have a look at what his hood does. Mm. Psychic hood is a 4 up, feel no pain ability against psychic attacks, but that isn't talking about mortal wounds. Okay, yeah, fair so enough. So, yeah, yeah. I okay. might be, yeah, you know what? He's going hazardous. He's yeah, feeling spicy. Okay. So, we're going spicy with the first attack here straight away. So, it's a 1d6. 1d6 shots. I saw the, big the three. one, uh, like, uh, yeah, quite a too. lot there. So, three shots going into the war bikers yep. over here. So, hitting on threes. Oh, that is spicy. That and is this real. has the devastating wounds so this is for the wounds so this, now. Yep, so what strength so is this? So strength six. I am toughness five, six. Yeah, six, so it's fours. Fours and sixes are wonderful. And they are indeed. I re-roll that one there because you re-roll all. Oath of moment. Oath of yes, moment, of course. Who? Yeah. Do, do, do. So how wounds aren't broken. So this is the thing. You've wounded me three times, but these two are devastating wounds. And how much damage does it do normally? So these will be a D3 uh, mortal wounds there, and this will be a regular D3 at uh, minus two. Wow, okay, so I'm going to be looking at a mighty six up save uh, for the one that I can make, which I do not make. So it is three D3 mortal wounds, effectively, yep. to my Warbiker squad, and they've got three wounds apiece. So five. five. Oh, blimey, that is a big kick in the nads right there. But before I remove the models, let's see this hazardous test. Let's see if he blows his brain up. Oh, he does not. He is no. fine and dandy, unlike the boys over here. So next up, it's the Infiltrator's um, Bolt Carbines, the Marksman Carbines. Marksman Bolt Carbines. Okay. So that means that they've got the heavy keyword, so if I hadn't moved, they'd be hitting them too. Ah. But they did move, but they're re-rolling everything, everything anyway. Yeah. Threes. Ooh, okay, re-roll them. Boom, boom. Okay, so now it's going to be no oh. devastating wounds on these ones, luckily. No, no, because that Ooh. would be utterly Spicy. horrendous. Okay, so uh, five to wounds, but re-rolling. Oh, man, that's good. Three there. Okay, okay. 
And no more there. So how much AP is on this one? Zero. So zero AP, so it's three saves. Pass them here, baby. Three saves of four up. Let's see it. <laughs> or not in this case, so I lose another biker and another one is down to one wound remaining. Eep, eep. Next up, it's the heavy intercessor squad going into the same target. They've weakened them. There's oil leaking all over the place. The orcs are worried and now they can smell blood in the water. So it is how many shots from their super duper heavy bolt Two, rifles? Four, six, eight. So it's going to be eight shots from the regular bolt rifles because nice. they are, as from checking the new app, so cool. if it's wrong, Blame GW. Okay, fair enough. Uh, so heavy bolt rifles, two attacks, hitting on threes with the heavy and assault keyword. Yep. And it is strength five, minus one, one damage. Cool. So you'll be hitting on threes, you'll be wounding on fours, and that's not bad. Okay. And wounding on fives. Oh, because, because I'm tough on six here. Yeah, yeah. Yep, apologies. Okay, but re-roll everything. Not that you really needed to there. Oh, the one miss. Damn you, one. Now wounding on fives, but re-rolling everything. Oh. Damn. Sweet. Okay. Okay, only one, to, two to re-roll. Okay, and what's the minus on this one? Minus one. Okay, so five two, ups four, to save. Six. six, five up saves. Let's see if I've got it in me. Oof. I do have it in me. I take three wounds though, so it kills another biker and another one is down, surprisingly, to one wound. Seems to be the sort of like common thread with these guys yes. here. And now they are at half strength, so anything under now will be a battle shock test that I yep. need to take, correct? So the Brutalis is now going to line up his shots onto them. Okay, so the Brutalis is next. And what's he got? He's got an Icarus twin stuff. Yeah, up so here. I think I'm going to start with that because it's. Oh, and I didn't do the uh, heavy blotter. Oh, there is a heavy bolster within the group. Let's do that yeah, as well. So, so it's three shots, is it? Yep. Oh, very nice indeed. Rerolling everything. Nice. Again, and then this is going to be. Fives. Fives, re Ooh, everything. It also has sustained hits, I believe. Oh, and yeah, I, I so want to say. So that would give. That would have put an extra one in yep. to shoot. So you've got one extra wound roll to do. Nope, but re roll it because of Oath of Moment. Booyah. So there's two wounds that I've got to save then for those. Yep. And this is at minus one, and it is two damage. Oh, this is going to sting. This is going to real sting. Unless I make one fair one, so that means that he is out of there, and I now have to take da, a da, battle da, shot da, test da, da, at the beginning of my uh, command phase. And there's the token to say that. Thanks, Mark. Now, if you fail your uh, battle shock test, which is um, you have to roll above or equal to their leadership, um, it means you can't use any uh, stratagems on them, and they don't have counters having any OC to capture objectives, which means no, I no, won't no, start no, no. with that no, under my control. No, no. Not bad at all. So now we move over to the Brutalis, who is going, he's got his twin. Yep, so Icarus. on top of his head. So this has the anti fly keyword, won't come up here. Yep. Uh, it is 36 inch range, so if he's within 18, this is going to be six shots instead. Blind me, I would say that you are within no, 18 inch absolutely range. Am I, I, I pre measure. Nice. Uh, and it has the twin linked keyword. Not that that would apply here. Because you re roll everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah nice. So uh, we have have six shots hitting on threes. Boom, 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 boom. boom. Hey, finally hit with everything. Boom, boom, boom. And then it's going to be five to, five to wounds, re rolling everything. Unless they count as flying. Which they <laughs> Surprisingly, don't. they don't. I mean, they're flying into pieces after all these shots, man, because these are some spicy rolls. Okay. AP on this. Da, 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 da. Minus one. Minus one, so it's going to be five up saves to keep my boys alive. I make two, but fail three. That is another of them gone, leaving only the boss knob remaining and his four wounds. Eep! So now it is Eep. the last bit of shooting for them, which is the uh, twin multi-melter. What's the range of that? 18. Well, in that case, then, they're definitely within range. So, okay. two shots. Eep! Eep! Rerolling everything. Eep! And <laughs> I'm enjoying the eating. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so I'm so turning into Beaker from the Muppets. <laughs> I love Beaker. I know, right? So threes. But re-roll that one because of both the moment. Ooh, so these are rally. minus four. Well, D6 um, damage. No, wait, wait, you... wait, let's see. He may survive if you roll low. You didn't. <laughs> that is the bikers gone, my friends. One round of shooting, re-rolling everything. Who would have guessed that that is a powerful ability to re-roll everything in a dice game? No. I'm not even bitter. I'm impressed because these are my boys. I want them to do well. <laughs> maybe a little bit less. A chill. little bit less. Just well. chill. <laughs> okay, uh, the Desolators are going to be up next. Yes. So the Desolators have picked their target and it is, surprisingly, the kill rig. Everything? No. So uh, Everything? The, the, the four shots on the super crack 
is going up there, so that's the big hitter guns. Yep. Uh, and then all of the indirect fire shots, because they stood still, they don't get affected by the minus one. Ah, they're going to shoot the squig hog boys. Yep. I, I desperately wanted to shoot the grots, but they are just a so little mean. bit So of mean, so mean. I need to get them to one objective just to use that ability. I need it, baby. None for you. Oh, dear <laughs> me. Well, that's what you said to my bikers. <laughs> so now yeah. we're going to go into the shooting. Here. So it's four shots, yes? Yeah, four shots of the super crack. Now, this is going to be hitting on threes. Usually it hits on fours, but because they're heavy, it's plus one. Yep. And you're going to be wounding on fours because it's strength 10 versus toughness 10. Yes, so there we go. see if it works. <clears throat> wow. Three old big hits. OK, nice. And now and wounded on fours. OK. Two wounds. Minus a two. lot. Minus two, so it's going to be uh, five up saves mm -hmm. for the kill rig. And it's D6 plus one, isn't it? D6 plus one, yes. The two five ups. Made one, failed one, so D6 plus one damage coming in for the kill rig. Ooh, oh, seven, seven damage. Eesh, eesh, eesh. That has brought him in one fell swoop down from, I believe, 16 wounds down to nine. Down to nine. Eep. So it's time for the indirect fire now, going into my squig hog boys, my beautiful boys. So uh, because of the b new blast mm -hmm. keyword, which for every five models in the unit, you get an extra attack. This will be uh, 3D3 plus three shots. Yep, that's nice. So we get two, four, seven, ten shots. Not bad at all. Heading and, on. Uh, so these will not suffer that uh, indirect fire rule because of their targeting optics. Yep. So they will be hitting on a. Ooh, yeah, on a three. Yep, on a three. Here we go. Ooh, spicy. And then it's going to be strength of this is. It's four. So it's going to be five, five to wound. OK, so we're looking at three. three wounds. And what's the AP on this one? I believe it's zero. OK, so if that's the case, I have a four up save, but I do not get cover from it. No. Because your thing is that if you stayed still, I, you would Yes, that was the it. other part of the targeting yep. optics. Yeah, so that means that I don't get to claim uh, the benefit that I would normally get for the minus one to hit me. Uh, and I don't make a single one, so I believe that that is. It's a dead a, man. You know what? I'm going to spend a CP here, I think, because I want to keep as There is boys. the Venga launcher coming, which is a damage two one. Yeah, I'll make you waste a damage two on one guy, which doesn't matter anyway. So I spent a CP. He is out of there. Bye. See, oh, wait, no. Don't I have feel no pains? I do have feel no pains. So I get uh, three damage worth of five ups because the King Orc that is leading them. And I don't make a single one. What? Wow, I've rolled nine dice and not rolled a single thing higher than a three. That is bad. Guys, you should have seen our test the games. Oh, it was brutal. He was a demon. <laughs> it's always the case. Um, so that is... The Squig Hog boys have taken one uh, model casualty and, and now, now the it's the Venga. The Venga launcher is coming in. <laughs> How many shots does it get? It got D6, yeah. D6 and the blast has... key rule uh, will still apply because you still got over five, so sure. D6 plus one. For four. Four. A respectable shots. four. Nice hitting so, on. So he hits on twos. So this will be up to threes then because of the minus, because of the targeting optics. Because of the targeting optics. Gotcha. He ignores that, so he's hitting on twos. Gotcha. But there's the one. Oh, okay. And then there's going to be... Strength seven, so it's three Three's to the wound. wound. One wound. wound. AP minus. Minus one. Five up save? Yes. Oh, I saw it, but then it so dropped two, off. So uh, two feel no pains? Oh, yeah, two feel no pains. Thank you very much for reminding me. Come on, Orc and or Mork. Boom, I only take one wound from that. Oh, the Vengerverse. So that means one of them is down to two. Stinky. Okay. So uh, the uh, surprisingly, the short-range flamers are just standing there looking cool. Yeah, to be fair, that's all they need to do. They need to just absorb a charge that is most definitely coming their way. A very good round of shooting, I would say. Cleared off a big blob of bikers over there, started dealing damage to another one of my key units. Pretty impressive. And let's not forget the monstrous hit you did with one of your shots coming yes. through there. So there's no charges to make because you've pushed back all of the threat I ranges have there. So that means it's the end of your turn, my man. Um, and I don't have to take a battle shot test because you've removed the only unit that was there. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I'm not under half wounds with my kill rig yet, so I don't need to take a battle shot on him. No. Coolage. So I believe that's the end of uh, Sentinels of Brobnar turn one, and it goes into Orc turn two, and I'm probably going to have to call a word right now just in order to survive. So let's get to it. Here we are, Orc turn two, and I've called a Tim Allen based what? And it has awoken something within the boys. The green energy crackles beneath their skin, and they are very, very intent on making as many charges as possible. I've dumped off my Beast Snagger boys here before this guy decided to move around with an advance. He is going to get into those Inferno Squad face, and he may be able to uh, use his word tower to melt them back, kick some back of that Brutalis Dreadnought over there. 
The Beast Boss, supported by his boys, have also rushed up through uh, the centre. They're not even worried about collecting the objectives at this point. They just want to cause as much chaos as possible. Um, we've moved up the Gretchen over here. We've got a Mighty Five. They are going places. I'm not entirely sure where, but they are going. Lovely. And um, what else was there that we were going to do? Oh, yes. There is some Overwatch. That's right, Overwatch in the movement phase because Beanie can actually pay to use Overwatch in my movement phase and in my charge phase as yes. well, which is pretty good. Only, now, oh, but it's only once per turn. Once per turn, but he's chosen to use it with the Desolator squad going against the uh, Kill Rig because he only needs to do nine wounds. Fishing for sixes may be, but if he gets them through, that's going to be pretty bad news for me to the extent that I feel like I have to spend that CP that I generated at the beginning of the turn for the um, dead hard one. Oh, I, I don't even know if I can use it on a vehicle, actually. Shall or we monster. double check? Let's double check that before I uh, commit to it. Ah, so we checked out the rules, and while I could technically use it on the kill rig, I can't use it right now because you can only use Arda's nails, which is the one CP strat to minus one from the wound roll, in your opponent's shooting phase or the fight phase. And because this is my movement phase, it's got to be counted as that. So it's going to be the Desolation Squad going in against the kill rig. Choop, 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 choop. Everything they got. So we're yep. going to start off with the big guns. Sure, sure, sure. Come on, sixes. Six. Le Mans. OK, so there's one. This is the big guns, isn't it? These yes. Ones here. Okay. This is on a four. Fours. What's the CP here? Yeah, I totally yeah, is. OK, so CP. Ah, oh, oh, damn you two. OK, OK, you fair enough, fair enough. And now it's the uh, the Venger bus and also the Castellan. Yeah, so we'll do the Venger for D6 shots for the big old one. Classic. And it misses. Oh, MP poos. And now it is the four Castellan launchers. Mm -hmm, yes. mm -hmm. Ooh, does the... No, I think what's his chops has one as well. Or so... the Sargent. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Roll it. 5D3. Beep, 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 so beep, 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 that's crazy that they can fire both at the same time, isn't it? Well, they might tell us that we can't, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure you can with shooting attacks as long as it's not a pistol. Hey, it doesn't say specifically choose one of these profiles, does it, yeah. on their thing, so... Okay, sixes. Oh, nice. Strength of this is... Oh, I'm looking for sixes. Oh, fantastic. And, and I got there's one. one. And how much AP is this? Zero. So it's a three-up save. Oh, he just makes it through. I think it was a, a noble effort, a great idea, but it just didn't pay off this time. Eep. So now it's time to go into my shooting phase over here. The only things that I can really do are the stickers from these guys there, and then it's the kill rig. We're out of range for the slugs over there, as, as we are maybe with the grot pistols. I don't know if that's 12 inches, but I'm gonna do the incidental fire first and come back with something a bit more chunkier. With the incidental fire done, that was all of my stickers and saddle get weapons over here and the grots that couldn't actually technically see over, so we said that they can't see the, um, the infiltrators over here there to shoot them. I managed to get a few wounds through with the stickers, but unfortunately Beanie's mad rolling kept all of them alive. The thump gun went wide as well, the boys were out of range over there, so now it comes down to the kill rig. Now I did think about pouring a ton of firepower into the Brutanus to weaken them up, but I want the boys to have the glory of that charge. So instead, what they're going to do is they're going to fire the um, Wur Tower and the uh, Ebby Lobber into the Desolation Squad because they are good. they're pretty bad news. And then the Sticker Cannon has to go into the uh, Inferno Squad over here just because they are the closest unit that are within range. So it's going to be the one shot from the Sticker Cannon going in at range 12. Here we go. It does hit on a five. Weep. Okay, and then it's going to be uh, strength. Wounding on threes? It's a two, it does not wound. Boo Ooh. earns, and then it's going to be the heavy lobber coming into, it's got blast, it doesn't matter in this case here, so it's D6. They get one extra, wouldn't they, because oh. there's five people in the squad. Well, there we go, it's D6 plus one, that's seven shots. Four. Damn your eyes. <laughs> five. Oh, five. Oh, how many have we got? Five, six. One more dice, please. There you are. So, we're hitting again on the loveliest of fives. I hit you one time, classic orc shooting here. That extra shot did count. It did. Uh, I'm going to be wounding you on threes. And it does not wound again. Classic orc shooting the conversion. Bad. And then it comes down to the word tower. It's D3 auto hitting shots onto the desolation squad. For the big three, that is a big deal. This is strength a lot. It's going to be wounding you on twos. There's the one. Yeah, I know, right? But uh, I wonder. Does if it have devastating? I was about wounds. to say, if the sixes do something here, I'll just double check. So it's at minus three down to minus two because of the fact that the desolation squad are in cover. So five ups to keep you boys alive. Only two dice needed. Only two dice needed, roll them again. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt there. And I'm glad I did, because that is two through two D6, the first one. 
for four. The second one, for four. Ouchie. Two of those guys have been obliterated by the fierce eyes of Mork or Gork. We're not choosing favorites here, but the problem is, is that it's hazardous. So I've got to roll a d6 now. Don't roll a one. I take some damage. I do not, Hooray. thankfully. I'm smiled upon by the green glowy gods of goo. So that was pretty good though. Um, it was bad and then suddenly okay. Yeah, yeah, not bad at all. So that's the end of my shooting phase. I'm gonna line up some charges, think about spending some CP to make these charges even easier. I'll be right back. Here we are in the charge phase. Everything's going in. The beast boss into the infiltrators, the squig hog boys with King Orkther around the corner into the Brutalis and the kill rig into the Inferno squad. Now, I was going to pay for Here We Go to give plus two to the charges, but you have to do that at the beginning of your movement phase because it affects your advance and charge roll, so I can't do that. And I don't get to re-roll um, charges now because Here We Go has been removed from that. So all in all, what I roll is what I roll. I have one CP to, I've got two CP, but I can only use one here. So let's see if the boss makes it in. Seven inch charge, it's in. Ooh. Here we go, indeed. Base to base contact, that is important in 10th. Then it's going to be around the corner into the Brutalis right now because I'm a beast unit, so I can't move through that. Six, seven, eight. I'm pretty sure we're Ooh, good. Absolutely. We are good. So we'll put one of the boys there as far around as he can and the boys will join him soon. But now here's where the interesting thing happens, Beanie, my boy, because I'm paying for a strat called Tank, Tank Shock. Shock. It's one CP and it seems bonkers. I'm going to do a charge. I have to make the charge first, but all I need to do is come into contact with the barrier, right? Yes. So let's see if I get in first. A six, I'm pretty comfortably yeah, in there. Yeah, that's, that's, that's fine. So I'm touching the barrier here and now what I do is I choose one of my model's weapons in melee, which I'm gonna choose the saw blade because they're strength 10 and I roll a d6 equal to the amount of strength. So 10 d6 and an extra two because the strength is higher than the person I've charged. On a five up, Beanie will take a mortal wound for each dice roll to a maximum of six. For one what? CP, that seems bonkers. Yeah, that is crazy, crazy. But here we go, and I'm definitely, I know that you're gonna be using it next turn anyway. <laughs> if you, you get out of believe. Combat. So I'm gonna get some 10d6 and just see how it goes. 12 dice in my baby hands, Bean. In my <laughs> baby, baby hands, I'm looking for five ups. Oh. <laughs> So one, two, three, only three. That's fine. It looked like a lot more for there, but that's still- I saw pretty, a lot of fours. That's still pretty good though. So three mortal wounds straight away. Ow. One Infernus member is dead and a wound passes over. I'll take that for one CP, let me tell you that. But I'm gonna move the rest of the boys in and then we're gonna start some crumping. Beanie's only got one CP, so he can't even interrupt. So it is time to attack and we're starting with the kill rig over here with the extra attack that the war gives me. That's going to be for my saw blade. Seven attacks hitting on threes, sixes explode because of my army rule, which puts the two that I just dropped back in. So it's now going to be ten, it? strength 10, so twos, twos to wound. That is a fair amount of wounds there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven wounds coming in at minus one. Okay, uh, so they're behind. Doesn't the... count in, in combat. Okay, so fours. So that is four dead because they're two damage apiece. So the squad is dead apart from the... the Lieutenant who is over there. So the other attacks are all gonna go into him and these are extra attacks uh, for my kill rig. These are the savage horns and hooves. These are gonna be hitting on fours. Sixes are great. I put two back in. So there we go. And then this is going to be strength eight, but because I have the lance keyword, it's going to be wounding on twos, twos anyway. anyway. Yep, so twos. Wow, wow, only two wounds coming in from that. It is minus one, but it is three damage a piece. Okay, uh, so it's minus one. Now, so because he's got a storm shield, does that mean that you get to choose to either reroll your invulnerable saves of one? Uh, no, I think that just gives him the extra wound. Okay, let's just double check that one there, because I know that the blade guard vets have a special, special rule for rule, that. Yeah. So it doesn't give him the ability that it does the blade guard vet, so he's on four ups right now, baby. Ooh, failed one, that's three damage. I'll take it, because it means something. It means something indeed, and then the final attacks with them is the butcher boys that are on the side. Four extra attacks, hitting on threes. <laughs> and we explode one back into the pile. We then are on strength five. You are toughness four, so threes, threes to wound. You oh, are with the lance, it'd be twos. Uh, not in this case, it's the, only the savage horns and hooves that have the lance keyword, so that is going to be three wounds coming in, minus one, one damage a piece, so three, four up saves. So if I fail them all. Yep. 
Ooh. Fail one. Ooh, okay, so he's down two. Two. Two wounds remaining, but he still stands proud. For the MP Poos, And indeed. he will get to pile in and do his fighting. He will indeed, but we will come back to him in a moment because we're working down the board and now it is time for the uh, Squig Hog Boys and King Orkther to deal out the damage, but... I'm paying for Armour of Contempt, so it's going to be minus one to the AP of their attacks. Indeed it will, which brings them down from a mighty AP one to AP zero, which does not sound as good to me. But but on the plus side, at least I get a fair amount of attacks, so maybe I'll get a few through. And I have the anti-vehicle four-up keyword, which isn't bad at all. Yeah, so it's you're fishing for fours. Indeed I be. Uh, it is four attacks a boy. I'm going to be back with the save rolls. Okay, so I've got a fair few wounds in against Beanie, but remember these AP zero and he has a two-up save. So here we go. I... So I take four damage. Yeah, that's not too bad. A good start, boys. And then it's the saddle, saddle get weapons that are coming in here. These are hitting on fours, but for threes, because King Orkther is leading them. Go, saddle gets, sixes explode. Oh, that's pretty nice, man. Okay, for the saddle gets, yeah. Oh, I've ruined one there, and one goes back into the pile. And now, these are strength six, your toughness a lot more yeah, than so that. Fives. So fives, uh, one coming in, it would be normally AP one, but AP zero. So one save of two up. He is fan and dandy like cotton candy. So it's down to Head Whopper's Kill Chopper over here on King Orkther to do the damage because the boys, they've not done enough. Fortunately, there were zero wounds done by Head Whopper's Kill Chopper over here because of the fact that the Armour of Content blocked a few of the wounds that came through and I didn't get any devastating wounds to fish for those to push through those mortal wounds there. Unfortunately, that's the best I can do over there. But we have one more contender to the throne, and that is the big boy himself, the Squig Hog Big Boss, who's going to come in and chomp and slash. It is time for the Beast Chopper first. It is seven attacks coming in, hitting on two. Six is a great. Uh, no explodies, but no dropped. I will gladly take that. Not bad at all. Now, these are going to be strength seven, but plus one because of the war. So it's going to be wounding on the twos. twos. That is three dropped somehow, but still, that is four coming in at minus one, and then this is going to be two damage a pop. Okay, so four ups, come on, for the Emperor. Ooh, MP Ooh, the, em the Emperor loved it. So only one managed to die there, and then it's the beast, uh, the actual Squiggasaur himself, which gets three extra attacks, and it's going to be uh, hitting you on fours. But does he give a buff to himself? I don't think he do. He... Do not, for some reason, he is uh, not able to control his squig as well as everyone else. He only gets one hit through. And then this is going to wound you on the mightiest of twos. Two, yeah. yep. It is a big wound, and it's minus two this time. Okay, so five up. Power Ooh, armor! Ooh, blimey. So very little damage done by the beast boss over there, but he has tied them up for the moment. And now it is time for Beanie's fight back. So the kill rig is about to take some spice from the LT over here, who is powering up his special sword, the Honor of Urban. Um, yes. Uh, it's time. Hit it on. Hit on twos. There's the three ones. Uh, amazing. <laughs> amazing. Now the so, strength of this. So because uh, of the Honor of Urban, put it up to strength six, so he's been wounding on the fives. Wounding on fives. One, One. big wound, AP minus. Minus two. Uh, so that'll put it up to a five up save, which he fails. How much damage? Two damage. Now so it's this. Down to six. this That's this will be down to seven, which means he is under half health. Is that correct? Yes, yes. it is. It's down to seven, so that means put a battleship token next to him, my friend. Yes, good point. Because he's going to need to take one at the beginning of my next command phase. So uh, that's the end of that combat there. Pretty good fight back, in all honesty. Um, mm -hmm. Now it's time for the big boy. Is yep. he swinging up? Yeah, so he's going to do his uh, strike attack. So it's going to be six attacks. Yeah, this is going to sting. There's no way I can save this. I'm just going to have to take my lumps. Okay, right, here we go. Let's do it, man. Let's do it. So six attacks. Hitting on threes. Hitting on threes. Ooh, beautiful. He loved it. Any exploding sixes or anything like that? Unfortunately, no. That's a shame. But, but he does get to reroll all of his wounds now because these are like effectively like twin, twin links. links. Yeah. Yeah. So this is going to be wound on threes, uh, rerolling. Damn, okay. Damn. Okay, right, so. Four. Four at minus a lot. I, yeah, I believe it's minus three, so we'll be onto the five up involved. Power of the war. Only compels once. So there so is three through. How much damage a piece? So three damage a piece. So three are dead. Okay, so it's five up, feel no pain. So the first one, first three. Uh, he, he is definitely dead because he only had two, two wounds remaining. The second three is dead. And the final three. Come on, come on. At least keep one of them alive. He's also dead. You've taken out. 
three squig hog boys in a single round of combat there. And being toughness seven with the feel no pain, that was pretty good. Yeah, I thought that, I thought you were going to at least jam out one feel no pain. There yeah, to I know, make that right? Work. Okay, so that is them. They need a battle shock token as well, my friends. Oh, this is where it gets spicy. This is where all of the objective control comes in now. Hey, hey. Don't be predicting the future. Battle test needed, oh, mate. Come on. I apologise for you, man. And then over here, it's time for the infiltrators and the four sword wielding librarian to take on the mighty Squigasaur. So here we go. It is time to go up against the beast boss. How many attacks? Ten, ten, uh, sorry, twelve attacks from their, their close combat weapons of the guys in the front. Nice. Oh, yeah, sorry, I need to do my pi uh. pile in because it has to be touching now, doesn't it, for yeah. you to do that? Well, and, well it's just so, and there he, you go. so he can go. And then he can actually do some attacking yes. as well. Yes. Cool, there we go. So they're all in combat. Let's do some rolling, hitting on. Threes. Nice. Any sixes exploding, anything like that? Oh, no. Classic. And then it is time for... Sixes. Nice. Sixes, Oop, one is. AP on this. Zero. Three up save. He makes it, brushing it off with his thick squig highs. But now it's time for the four sword, which is, as Beanie put it, slightly better than just fists. Slightly. Slightly. Yeah, so it's four attacks. Yep. Hitting on threes. Nice. Strength six. Okay. So it'll be wounding on fives, minus one D3 damage. That's pretty good. Okay, so threes. Okay, so two big hits. Fives to wound. One big wound. Minus one. So, so four, four up. up. He doesn't make it. D3 so D3 damage. three damage for Ian, and he has a four up feel no pain, pain because of course he does. And he doesn't make it. He's taken his first wound. Do, do. He's down two, six, seven, eight remaining. Ooh, this is going to be a slog, isn't it, over here? You can just feel it. Yeah. Okay, so that is the end of the combat there. Actually, no battle shock to take on your side of things because I put you down. Oh, actually, oh no. he's battle shocked. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he's not battle shocked yet, but you will need to take a test at the beginning of your turn. So. That's the end of Orc turn two. The power of the war is still in effect until the end of my next go, because I went first and you call it at the beginning of the battle round. I am playing this right. I know that there's a few changes. So now we move into Sentinels of Brobnar turn two. With a crackle and a slam of weight, the Terminators have arrived on the battlefield over here. They are now holding objective number three, but their arrival has signaled a change in tactics, quite literally for the Sentinels of Brobnar, as Beanie has now put these guys into the tactical doctrine, meaning that they can fall back from enemy units and still shoot and still charge. The kill rig is taking the brunt of the punishment today by getting those three grudgement tokens, I mean, Oath of Moment being put on uh. top of him. And that means, in theory, because the Brutalis has fallen out of combat over here, it is devastating up close and has a brutal charge that deals mortal wounds, there is a potential that this will be wiped out very quickly, freeing up a lot of extra firepower in the next two turns to take out the three remaining units that are left on the board here. Four? Let's not forget, let's just leave the Grots alone. The Grots are not going to do anything mm. to you, just leave them be, okay? Because of the heavy incessors, they're going to stay still, so they're going to hit on twos. The uh, incursors are going to be able to do chip damage either side to the grots or to the beast boss. And you've got the terminators who may do a charge through the ruins over here to take out the boys and claim that objective for themselves. We'll see how that goes. Uh -huh. So that's a pretty good position for the Sentinels of Bromnar to be in. And I passed my battle test, uh, battle did. shock test with Indeed. my li uh, librarian, uh, uh, lieutenant. Did indeed. Lieutenant. So let's go into the shooting phase now because there is a lot of shooting to be done and it's quite important now. So where do you want to start? Chip damage first or do you want to warn it work up to the big boy? I'm going to go against the big boy. That makes uh, sense. And we're going to start with the Brutalis. Yes, yes, because he's come close. He's going to be in multi-melter range. My five of them vulnerable probably won't save me for the sheer amount of damage that's coming his way. Um, I believe it's two attacks with the twin multi-melters, but they re-roll everything anyway. So it yes. should be okay. And then he's got the twin Icarus stuff. Which again should be point, uh, pretty nasty. Yes. So, uh, and they've got the melter two keyword. So because I'm within uh, within nine inches, you this will be D six plus two. Very nice indeed. So how many shots do you get? So two shots with the uh, multi melter hitting on threes, re rolling. And good Jeez. thing that you are. Oh yeah, one big hit through their strength. So it's nine. So it's going to be wounded on fives. But re rolling. Re rolling. Re roll. There it is. AP minus is a lot, so I'm yeah, going to be on to my five open vulnerable save. I do not make it. So how much damage is this going to be? So this is going to be D6, D6 plus two. 
Ooh, seven. seven, and that is exactly the amount of wounds that I have left. <laughs> I believe that you have just killed my kill rig. In one shot. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Turns out that I had a feel no pain of six up over here, so I've got seven six ups to make. I completely forgot that I even had them. Too many new data sheets, too many new rules. Simplified, ha, I laugh at the EGW. So six is to keep my boy alive. And neither made so he all oh, dies. No. Boo! So he's deadly got demise. But deadly demise is D6. So yeah, roll a D6. And what does it do? Is this the range? Is it what? Like, I don't even know what it do. I, and I missed the tray somehow. So I'm going to roll this dice here. Yeah. Boom. A two. I don't know what this is. So Let's shall we out. look Let's into the out. rules of Let's deadly demise? So the kill rig is gone because I needed a six to trigger the deadly demise. So that is him out of there. And that means that this side of the board is pretty much over under or under Beanie's control. So that means that all of the firepower that would be dedicated to the kill rig can now go elsewhere at two other prime targets. So who would you want to shoot with next, my man? Ooh. Ooh. Desolation squad into finishing off these boys, maybe? Because toughness seven versus their high value. It's what I'm thinking, because yeah. if they're gone, that would be pretty wonderful. Because the thing is that you can mop them up with a charge going in later, but if they're just gone, they're gone, and then well, everything can go into that. So what if they shot him? I mean, you could definitely do that. That would make a lot of sense. Do it. Do it. I dare you. I double dare you. Fine. Fine. Get off my back. That was easy. Right, okay, so uh, <laughs> three or two of the heavy launchers. So it's going to be the two heavy launchers. The, so I'm going to use the Venger bus on the beast snaggers over there. Okay, so up and over over here. Lovely stuff. Up and over. So it's going to be two and then them. And Perfect. the Castellan launchers. Mm-hmm. Because I think they're in range. Oh, leave my grots alone. <laughs> leave them alone. They've done nothing. They're just a boy. Okay, fair enough. So the the castle and watchers go into them. So two big shots going into my big boss. So this will be hitting on the twos because they're heavy. Oh, no, no. They're, 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 they're fours down to threes. So yes. hitting on threes. Yes, yes, yes. Boom. One hit. So we're wounding on threes. I believe. Uh, strength ten. Oh, I'm oh. toughness ten. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so fours, my friend. Enjoy that. And enjoy it, you did not. Indeed, I did not. So they go wide and catches the other one in his mouth. Now it is time for the 3d3 Castellan launchers, is that correct? Yes. And then it's in plus one into them, or plus two, because yeah. it's... Um... Yeah, so it's going to be 3d3 plus six. Okay. Okay, so four, five, eleven. Blimey. We'll leave my boys alone. Okay, uh, so, ooh, yeah, sorry, I just need to check the... He's be hitting uh, on threes again, I imagine, because it's fours down to threes because he stayed still. Yes. So the castle launchers hit on threes. Oh, okay. So these will be hitting on twos. Nice. It, uh, oh, no, they haven't got the heavy keyword. Okay, so there. just threes then. Yes. Perfect. But indirect fire rules are ignored. Yes, because this is your multi-spectrum array thing that you've got. Targeting off. That's what I meant, yeah. Same difference. Uh, and then this is going to be strength. Uh, four. Uh, twos to wound. My poor boys. Everything wounded. It did. And yeah, I get four, no cover. Six, is that right for this? Eight, nine. I will confirm please, that. I'm, I'm... Please, I need cover. I need this to be a six up set. No I cover. Have, I, have, I have five up vulnerables. They're orc units. Yes. I still get them. How many do I have? So nine. Four, five, six, seven. Eight. Nine. Come on, Gretchen. Nine five ups. You know what? That's all right. One, two, three, four. Four die. And I'll make the charge a little harder for you. Enjoy Oops. that, because I knew you were eyeing it up. I knew you were going to go it's for them. It's all I ever wanted. That's okay. They're still not even uh, battle shocked or need to take a test yet. That's good for me. Okay, so. So, Venga launcher. Pshoo, into the boys over there. So, uh, because again, blast keyword. Yeah. Uh, so, it's going to be D6 plus two. Nice seven shots. How many dice are my hand? Oh, uh. Nearly. It's nearly enough. And then this is going to be hitting on threes again. Hitting on twos. The Vanguard launcher hits does on have the key, Does have the heavy word keyword, does it? Let me double check. Does it, does check it, does it? it? No, no, just hits on twos. Oh, just hits on twos. Fantastic. Okay. Achoo. Nicely done. So it's uh, strength seven, so it'll be three to wound. Will be indeed. Okay, so, so what are we looking at there? So that's three wounds at minus one, but five up involved. <sighs> So, and da two damage a pop. Uh, I think that I have a feel no pain of six up with Beast Snagger boys. It seems, to be, it seems to be the rule. Okay, so they do have a six up feel no pain, but it's two damage a pop, so it's uh, three of these that I've got to make. So the first one, unsurprisingly, is dead. The second one is unsurprisingly dead. And the third one is unsurprisingly dead. But at least they tried. So they that did. is three gone from the side here, which I actually know I'm going to keep that guy there for OC. 
and that makes the charge again <laughs> slightly harder. <laughs> okay, so that's <laughs> them shots. That's him shot. He can shoot his uh, Volkite pistol. He can. It is. Uh, I think. Uh, did they lower the range on it? Because it used to be fifteen, and it was like a really odd pistol that was yeah. slightly different. Uh, Feels like they would have reined that in because uh, GW have been so good at 12. reining in other stuff like that. <laughs> so he's going to shoot them. Okay, here we so, go. So, uh, one shot, hit on twos. Two. Nice. Big ol' hit. Oh, and because he's got the sustained hits that he gives to the squad that he's attached to, does that mean that he'd give it to himself? Does he give them own uh, rules? Does he have it as an ability that says when he's attached to a squad, does it specifically say. Oh, while he's leading Yeah, so no, he's not, he's not leading a unit at the moment, so he cannot do that. Oh. oh. So then it's going to be strength of this weapon is? Five. So it's going to be wounding on fives. And devastating wounds. Sixes are good. None. But it doesn't matter. Nil point. Okay, so now it is time for the heavy intercessors. Are they going to just do chip damage against him, or are they going to finish off the beast boys, or are you going to let the brutalis deal gonna with them? going to let the brutalis do the work there, so they're going to put everything in here. Cool, so, so we're looking at, four, do they get rapid fire six, at this range, or eight. do they have that So they it? always have two shots. Oh, I okay, believe. fair enough. So they don't need to worry about the rapid fire rule or anything like that, like you do with some other units. Yes. So, yeah, so it's the heavy heavy rifle. It's, nice. it's got the assault and the heavy keyword. It's cool. two shots, boy. But you're hitting on twos now because of the fact that they you stood, stood still. still. Very nice indeed. And then this is going to be strength. Uh, so it's fives. So you're going to be... Uh, it's going to be a sixes to wound because I'm yeah. toughness ten. Two wounds. Nicely done. AP on this? Minus one. Uh, so it'll be on four, uh, four ups. I fail one, made one. So he takes one down. Oh, uh, four up. Uh, four up, feel no pain. No, he does Takes take a it. Wound. There we go. It's all about the Whitlin. It's using the Whitlin knife, boy. And now uh, three shots from the heavy. Uh, oh pump, pump, yes, the blotter. Bolter. Yep. Two big hits. Oh, sorry, three big hits um, on that. Yep. And now uh, again sixes. Is it only strength five this gun? Yeah. Oh, that's so, interesting. Uh, and again, so minus one, but it's two damage this time. Oof. Ooh. Yep. So two, four up, feel no pain. Oof. Ooh. Oh no. Okay, okay, he's down to five wounds remaining. <laughs> uh, uh, he's destroying the battlefield. Um, so that's all of their shots done. You've got the Terminators to shoot, and you've got the Infiltrators over there. Where yes. are you going to go? So uh, let's go with the Infiltrators. Yes, sir. Infiltrators. So I am going to yet again do a hazardous smite into his bum. I like it, I like it. So we're pushing the realms of the warp. Here yep. we go. How, so D6. D6. D3, isn't it, that this comes in, or is it D6 attacks? I, I believe it's D6 attacks and then D3 damage, okay. but you know what? Because we're new to it all, let us just keep checking. It's always worth checking on these because, again, this every single data sheet has been updated in new and weird ways. Okay, so I get five. Five shots coming in, so hitting on threes. Hitting on threes. Here we go. That's pretty good. And Strength then six, so it's going to be fives to wounds. Fives to wounds, And yes. it's devastating wounds. Oh, that's very good. And that's very good right there. So, so one uh, of them is automatically D3 mortal wounds, but the other one I've got to save because we do the mortal wounds at the uh, end. No, 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 because it was fives. Oh, so, was it five? Oh, yeah, yeah, apologies. Sorry. So straight away, boom, two. two. Feel no pains. Neither made. Oh, what's going on, Jules? He's down. It's okay. I've kind of accepted that I may not win this battle given the uh, sheer amount of brutality that is still left to fight. But still, come on, boy. Okay, so now that's him done. Oh, no, you've got to do your hazard test now. Ah, uh, yes. I want to see this. I want to see a one. Come on. Pay me back. Yeah! yeah! How much damage does he do to his own Three brain? more wounds! Amazing! So and he's down to two, I believe. I yeah. love it. Okay, okay. My brain. It hurts so much. <laughs> it's throbulating. And then it's going to be shots from the marksman bolt rifles yeah. going in, yes? Or oh, carbines. Ooh. Ooh, okay. They're a little bit rattled. They are a wee bit rattled from all of this. Uh, six, as I imagine, to wound. Six is to wound. No, no wound. But they tried. And then it's going to be the storm bolters from them. Are they going to go into the grots and finish them off, or are you going to go into the beast boss? So I'm going to very sensibly split fire, I think. I love it. Ooh, or should I just try and gamble to take out? Just get rid of them. Get, just get rid of them. You know that you could finish off the beast boss. Uh, like, it, even if you don't kill him this turn, he's I, surrounded. I, I believe as well he's now battle shocked at his wound level. Yeah, he just has to take a test. Every yes. round. So test required for this lad. 
Okay, uh, so I am going to slightly split fire, mm -hmm. and I'm going to put the assault cannon into his bum. Ooh, okay. And then all of the uh, storm bolters this into way. The okay, so let's get the storm, the uh, not the bolters, the assault cannon that you just said. Okay. Landing, shooting into the back of the Squigasaur boss. Here he is. So six shots, hit on threes. Yes, yes, yes. Nicely done. So strength six. So it's going to be fives. Fives and devastating wounds. Oh, that's good. One. One wound. AP? Uh, AP is zero. So three up save. He has made it. Next up, it's all of the shots into the grot over here. How many shots is it per boy? So they should be within 12. Yes, I would the guy at the front. Are. Yes. So it's going to be four shots a boy. Wow, okay. That's a lot of shots Eight. and they're hitting on three still. Yes. Right? So 12, and then there's more. Nice. Okay, well, this could be the end of my poor, poor grots. I knew them well. Alas, poor Yorick. Yorick, you Okay, so that poor is a Yorick. lot of hits. Yes. And then this is going to be wounding on twos. On the big old twos. Come on. Ooh, okay. How many saves do I need to make there? Two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, seven, eight. Five up saves. The power of the war. Will it keep them alive? A little tried. bit. So there is one, two, three, four, five gone. How many of my boys are left? One. One, one guy. and a, and they're not in coherency. So let's just put, change that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure that he's next to his boy. So yeah. test is most definitely required for those boys over there. Eesh! My orc force is diminished, but it's still got a bit of chop, potentially. So it's now time for the charge phase. And oops, I believe that you have caught the attention of the big boy. See, the Brutalis is coming in, big charge, but you know what? I'm gonna spend my overwatch here. I'm gonna fire off this little grotula thing. I'll throw some stickers at him as well for one Can CP. Can you shoot the grot in? Well. Is, isn't it like an ability, not an attack? Let's double check this, because it's uh, an oh, it's overwatch. Let's see, let's go to the gun. I will not be doing that in the overwatch because of the fact that the bomb squig apparently had to be launched when you move, not in that. I was still playing on ninth rule, so I'm just gonna remove this, because he is just getting in the way and he's not gonna probably be used in this game. So. It is a big charge from the Brutalis going in. Are you going to pay one CP for tank shock and do all of the damage? Because you'll do that plus the mortal wounds you do on your normal charge. I am. Yes, yes. because you will potentially kill me before I've even got a chance to swing or indeed you to swing at me. Yes. Make your roll. Get in there. Uh, Should be okay. Getting <laughs> you're into testing it. You're testing it, mate. You're testing yeah, it. Yeah, he's, he's fine. He's fine. Okay, so he is in there. Hulk. but. Not as much as he'd want to be, but now with tank shock being paid, so you're down so to zero CP. So it's a, a damage, a strength 12 weapon. So you are definitely higher than my toughness. So it's going to be a... Uh, 14. Yes, it is 14 Six, dice. Nine, and you're looking for 12. five ups on these to do mortal wounds on the charge. And then the Brutalis gets his own thing when yes. he does a charge. So here we go. Any five ups we're looking for? So there is four. So four, five up, feel no pains on my squig hog boys. I make two, so we only take two, two more wounds. So one of them is down to one wound remaining. And now let me- And now me... he gets to do his own super charge, his ram in charge now. Yes, let me just get the wording, because we don't want- I believe you roll one D6, and then on a- Two to three, it's yep. D3. On a four to five, it is three. And on a six, it is D3 three plus, plus three. Three plus three, yes. You're looking for that six. Come on, baby. Amen! D3. Okay, so, okay, so. Uh, D3 plus 3. Oh, oh, six mortal wounds, so that is going to clear out the one that's no, there. No, 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 feel no pains. Oh, yeah, so six feel no pains to make. Don't, don't, don't sell them short. Here we go. I love the fact that this has all been done before I uh, get the charge off. Now I know how it feels to have ram in speed done to yeah. you at the end of ninth. Not bad, Stop actually. Two, so, but four. So that is going to kill off both of the Squig Hog boys, so which means that it's one on one with King Orkther over here. Can he survive against the Brutalis? My money is on no, but still, he will try. And one other charge. In, uh, the infiltrators into the back? Yeah, yeah, because they might as well. He's got three wounds yeah. now. Boom, they are definitely in there. They're going to wrap around him, make sure he can't escape. Yeah, good point. Tactics! Exactly. <laughs> so this is what the charge ends up looking like against the beast boss on Squigasaur. There are two big fights to go. I have three CP, so I will be paying to interrupt with someone. So it depends on who will get the last hurrah before the war goes nah. Okay. I'm just going to go with the Brutalis yeah. out of... Because I'm... I'm 
Because he should, because doesn't he have the thing that if he's below a certain amount of wounds, then he'll get minus one to hit? Because he's I so, don't, I don't know. He's so I will, heffing. I will double check that one there, but I don't think that it will be uh, between one and two wounds with something under nine wounds, I think, if it were to have that. And he's on three, so you're going to have to do some more damage for him to be capped if he has one. Nah, I'm, I'm going to stick to my guns. Yeah, Brutalis versus King Orkler. Let's see it. So, uh, hitting on threes. <laughs> And then re-rolling these wounds. Yeah, so wounding on threes, re-rolling. Mm -hmm. And good thing that we are. Because I missed with all of them. Oh, so nice. So three, uh, minus three. So three, five up saves. One of the last war saves that I'll get to make. <gasps> Two sixes. So it's only three damage. He's going to still be alive and he's still got five up. Feel no pains on top of it. No, but he does take the full three from that one. Uh, I'll put a marker there. I need to double check to see how many wounds he's got left. I'm going to pay to interrupt over here, but I'm going to check to see if he does get any minuses to his attacks and be right back. He's all fine and dandy, but unfortunately, even with a bit, he rolled OK, but Beanie's saving is just so good. He only managed to kill two, one. Uh, so one guy over there. So that means that he's spent his CP to interrupt and uh, now he's just sitting there. We'll just sit in the I'm going to punch him. OK, here we go. It's time for punches. So, so nine attacks from the regular weapons. Nice. Hit seven times. Nice. But wounding on the big old sixes. Mm -hmm. Not a sausage. Not a sausage. And then the power sword comes in. With four attacks. Hitting on threes. Ooh, okay. Wounding on fives. Yeah. Two big I wounds. I need to check if it's devastating because it is a forcey oh, sword. Oh, that does sound like <clears throat> it would have the devastating wounds keyword because it does seem to be everywhere. Everyone is devastating. I know, right? When everyone is devastating, no, no one is. Okay, so, so it's it is two at minus one, so two four ups. Two four ups. Made one, failed one. Now, I, it's D3. It is, and then you have a four, feel no pain. Because of the love of the game, I'm gonna let you roll it. Oof. For one. Oof. It did nothing. Okay, so it's another standstill over here. Handbags at door. <laughs> um, over here though, Head Whopper's Kill Chopper with my, um, with King Orkther, let's see how it do. So King Orkther struck back. He's managed to do one devastating wound and one that Bean needs to save at a minus one. So, so three, three up. up. Which he makes, so he takes two wounds and then it will be the Squigasaur Jaws, which I believe he only gets two attacks with. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, it's only two. Only two extra attacks hitting on fours. But they both hit and both explode. Excellent. <laughs> Classico. Okay, so uh, this is going to be uh, strength six. Up to seven, toughness of your guy is? Twelve. Okay. So ten or something. So fives. So one wound manages to squeak its way through. Minus one onto a three-up save. No, no damage taken there. So it's six wounds versus two wounds over here. Um, how many did he start with? Started with twelve. Oh, so he's just on the cap of being on for a... Uh, battle shock. Battle shock. Um, but he's definitely battle shocked because he's all yeah, alone. Yeah, yeah, he's very, very scared. So that is the end of the combat over there. I'm not loving my chances, Bean. I won't lie. I would agree with you. It's <laughs> not looking too spicy. So I may have to consider a tactical withdrawal here because I don't know if I can stand up to the power. I've got my two characters still alive. They could flee to live another day to make sure that they would have a greater story in Brobnar, to collect all of their war buddies and come back. But mainly, I just don't want to see my poor Grox die over there. Yes, you do. So what I'm going to do is, for the sheer laughs, we're going to do a desperate escape. That's how we're going to say I'm going to try and flee this battle. Even though I'm not under the conditions, I'm going to try and run. On a one and a two, I'm getting out of here, out of the game. I'm out of here. No damage taken. My squig boss lives to fight another day. Yay. Does King Orkther. King Orkther also runs. The boys left standing there, capturing the only objective that the Orcs had the entire game for their one VP. Look very confused. And the Orc uh, grots are carried off. Bodyguard style at the end of the bodyguard. So there we go. That is the end of the battle report. It, there was no way I was coming back from that. There was too much damage that needed to be done. A full squad of Terminators over there. And honestly, I'm not even mad about it. I came in, I crumped hard, I died harder. That is the Orc way of life. And the Sentinels of Brobnar 
get their first victory on their first ever outing on the channel. So at the end of the day, it's a loss that I'm very happy with. Beanie, how did you find piloting these brand new units of which there were quite a few because they were pretty much only being painted up the last couple of weeks ready to go for this uh, battle report. How did you find piloting them? I absolutely loved them. They were fantastic. They are purple as, as well, anything. Yeah. Uh, they, yeah, what what a fun army they are to play with. I cannot wait for us to get more reinforcements and do a bigger battle and just keep throwing them in. We'll start thinking about maybe naming some of the characters because yes. they did all right, like, you they know, did, he stood okay. up to a kill rig. Now, he stood up to a kill rig, but I don't think he's earned his chops yet because he just got his mates battered and he's yes, there. Yes, he did. He wasn't exactly valiant about it. He stood up to a, uh, to the squig boss, but I feel like he's got to claim a head. They've got to kill something worth, worthy of note and then they'll be able to take some namage. But right now, the Sentinels of Brobnar are on a 100% winning streak and therefore yeah. should retire as Retired. champions. <laughs> um, if you want to see how to paint a Sentinels of Brobnar stuff, there's going to be the painting... Um, the paints that you'll need in the description. And I'm gonna try and work with this guy, Mark, about getting um, some pauldrons made for 3D cults so you guys will be able to download them and attach them to your own models. So that is a little gift from us to you as thanks for supporting the channel. Thank Big you. love to everyone. Thank you so much for watching. If you wanna follow us on the social medias, I'm at RetroJ, but the O is a zero on Twitter, Instagram, anywhere else. And Beanie is on Instagram. Beanie40k. Beanie40k, you're damn right. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.